I don't want to be a guy that's just like, yeah, he ate, he slept, he shat. Right. A friend of mine owed me a favor, so you know, he got a 3D printer. And it was killing me. It was, the thing was fucking killing me. Sorry for cursing, but it was really, really killing me. It would, I mean, I was, pay, I was printing something, it would take like a week, and then at the end, it would mess up. So now I had to do it again another week, then it mess up again. And the machine broke, I had to set, set it back. Oh my God, it was, it was making my life crazy. And, um, and then I said, for like this kind of money, I could just take $500 and buy paint. And that's what I said, if I can just get rid of this thing, eBay, Craigslist, then I'm buying paint. And so I got rid of it and I bought paint. Is this one of your favorites? It's one of my favorites. The thing about paint like this, you can't really paint it again. It's not, there's no way you can do it twice. You can do it maybe larger, but even at that, it wouldn't feel the same. I, want, I thought about it and I was like, wow. What would a conversation between these two partake? What would that conversation be like? I consider that like a play, you know? Yeah. So I did was like, how do I feel about this conversation? You know? Like what would that conversation what would it look like? Yeah, I mean just like imagine it. being in that room and, and just experiencing that, you know? I like that when people that are so opposite get together and they're like there's a it, there's a synergy there. I like that you kept you did a heart. Yeah, they are controversial. Which is funny because that's what happened when I did the um, the Anna and uh, Carl's that when I did it on the street, I just I had it big. And there's something missing. There's, you know, it's so much tension there, but there's no tension. Right. You know, and then I just put a heart right in the middle. I just felt that it needed to be there, and it said everything about it. A friend of mine was in Italy and he came over, and I was in Paris. He said, "Come, come to party. So we had this party. It was, it was just crazy." And we brought these guys that are from Paris there. They were like, they were like, what, what's going on? It was like, it was a party. It's like, no, what's going on? It's like, this is crazy. This is everything. This is everything. Oh my God, free drinks, everything. Oh my God, this is crazy. I was like, yeah, this is how we do it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, and then Carl Larco just sitting, chilling in the corner, just like, you know, like this, looking out at everyone, like, yeah. And I was like, no, I was like, yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, he's like, you no, know, he was with some people, he was just more in his own. Okay. Room, so, yeah. And I remember that, so I had that imprinted in my brain. So that's like the essence that you got off? Well, you? it was like, you know, I was like, this guy's cool. Yeah, you see the reality, and then there's, there's a myth and there's a reality. Right. Know? And so you sit there going, like, wow, this guy's a cool guy, you know? And yeah. He's chilling, you know? So, or, so I, I, always, I, had always, I always had that image imprinted, and like, I, I'm gonna paint him one day. Time when everyone in New York had t-shirt companies and I was one of those dudes too. And fashion is ruthless. You know, there's the jungle and then there's fashion, business. It's something that you must have a strong constitute to, uh, to even get into. Like it's not a game. And you know what? I don't have that strong of a stomach. You know, I went to Oslo for the first time the first year it started. And it was more like, it's very small, not a lot of people, but people came back and buy our money was changing hands. This year, oh my gosh, everybody and their mother was an artist. Everybody. And it was just it was just crazy. You could it was just it was like Winter Music Con Festival. You know, I think <laughs> they I know, I think they should just start throwing concerts because it was literally like Winter Music Festival. And it was like everybody and their grandmother's there. To go from A to B, like hundred and fifty dollar Uber. Crazy. That is crazy. Crazy. And you were showing work, right? No, I did a collaboration with um, Italian Independent for their new store out there. I painted a piece out there for um, uh, La Cote Klein. You know, really cool guy, really cool guy. Like, I was surprised, because I knew nothing about him beforehand. I just knew that he was one of, I met the partners, and apparently he was in a car accident, I uh, know, motorcycle accident, and no one told me this. But I just, you know, he comes over and he has a cane and then we take photos and he bends down like this and I mean, that takes a lot. If you're, if you're physically impaired temporarily and you're in pain to, to bend down and show respect and give it like a, a photo hug photo like that, I'm I mad respect for the guy, you know, and that means he respects me, so I give it back. 
I love gold frames. Like you, you cannot frame any of my stuff unless it's in a gold frame. I get people walking all the time, you know, and they're just weird people. You know, oh, I want to buy you art before you before you die. You know, like. <laughs> Oh, I want to buy art now. It's so terrible. I, no, I want to buy art now so I can get it cheap. You know, like yeah, it, thanks. I, yeah, it's just like it's weird because I would never sell a painting to a person like that. No, never sell a painting to a person like oh, I got, I, oh, I'm a billionaire. I don't, I know billionaires. You know, I literally know billionaires. They, they don't give me any money, and they don't, I, and I don't give them any paintings because a painting is like a kid. It is. It, it doesn't eat shit or get in trouble at school. <laughs> I mean, it is. And once the painting leaves your house, it goes and have its it's it's it's, it's gonna like have it. its own life, you know. So when you have a bunch of kids together, you know they inspire they they inspire each other and they, they inspire you, you know. So being able to look at them now and, and bring some of like the greatness from one really amazing painting into another amazing painting, it it really helps. You do keep them all. This is my normie camera. I'm not OCD, but when I do something, I do it all the way and I do it. I do it. All in. All in. So, I, it, I've been painting thus far about a year and a half. So, every day, even even dark days when you're like, you know, your dog dies, which is my dog's not dead. Like, a lot of people think that my work looks a little morbid or whatever, but when you put it in a beautiful environment, it looks beautiful. Beautifully framed, it looks amazing. On a wall, it, I swear to God. And it's crazy because there. I didn't know it, you know? I, when you, when they're up, they're like, they sing, they have their own little voice. Even the little my, little Nick Woosters, they just have that little thing when they're together. Could you, would you separate those? Could you? Think about it. Kuz was actually one of my inspirations. We were, he did a lecture at School of Visual Arts one year, and me and my friend were there, and that's one kid who was, that heckled him hard. He was a friend of mine, and he just was like, I mean, the guy was, he heckled everybody, but he definitely heckled Kuz that, Kuz that day. Like, he was like, whoa. And, um, and then years later, I saw him at the Met, not, not the MoMA, the MoMA, um, at the MoMA Gala, um, invited by a friend of mine. And we're talking, and he remembered doing the lecture and everything. He was like, yeah, yeah I see you guys. Uh, gave me a little hard time there. Oh, he remembered? Yeah, he remembered. And then he goes, oh, so, you know, <laughs> show me some art. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, it's not good enough to show cools, you know? Right. And that's when I first started painting. I was like, I have to make sure that whatever I do is going to be, like, amazing. You know, even like Kahimi was talking to Matt Hammond. And um, he loves one of my pieces. Um, he, he was like, yeah, show me art. I was like, did you show? I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't have good art. <laughs> <laughs> so Give I, me a no, call. I, no, so, so call, call, I'm coming back. I'll be back. I'm back in six months. <laughs> Most people think that I just paint on the street. I have like, a, I, by, 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 by next month, I feel like I have like 80 paintings, you know? But the reason I love painting, doing these pieces on the street is because people tell you whether they're good or not. You don't get, you know, it's either they're good or they're not. You get full on, it sucks, or I like it. This is Bradley Theodore for News Cult TV. <laughs>